Yeah, so for the next 30 minutes or so, um, before coffee break, um, I would like to um, try to convince you that uh, it's good to modernize software. Um, and um, I don't know, uh, is any one of you developing applications, tuning applications, working with people who are, who are optimizing and writing applications? Yeah, a few, a few people. Um, so we, I'll, um, I, I talk about what what we think uh, the current situation is, uh, what needs to be done, and uh, also talk a little bit about um, how how it can be done. So my title is software modernization, in the sense um, that software applications or code should be able to take advantage of modern performance technologies. As, uh, as the hardware is evolving uh, and continues to, to evolve over time, adding more and more features to get more performance, um, certainly it would be good if software can, uh, can be able to utilize all those technologies. If not, um, software will leave performance on the table today and probably even more in the future if, uh, if the software is not modernized in a, in a way that it, it can, can take advantage of the underlying hardware. So um, just have a look at uh, some historical data and some predictions. Um, if you look at the uh, top 500 list, you see in, in 2003 um, the, the Number one machine had about um, 35 teraflop performance. In 13, it was uh, 33 peta petaflops, so from, from teraflops to petaflops in 10, 10 years. And then if it, uh, the prediction and the estimation is if it continues the same way in another 10 years by 2023, uh, we should be able to be in, in an exaflop area for, for computing. Um, if you look at the same time, you see in 2003, uh, for the number one systems, uh, about 5,000 cores were used. Ten years later, it was about three, 3 million cores, so going from uh, thousands to millions in 10 years. And then the estimation is, uh, if, if you continue this trend, um, that in another 10 years, by 2023, um, we should be by about 2 billion cores. So thousands to millions to billions. So what does it mean? Um, basically, it means that probably parallelism will be there. And we see that this is an industry trend. It's, uh, it's nothing specific to a, a certain vendor. It's an industry uh, trend. High performance is basically achieved through parallelism. And it's parallelism uh, on all levels. It's inside a, inside a core, it's uh, across a node, and it's, a, it, it, it's across different nodes through a cluster, for example. So is there anybody who disagrees that um, parallel is a path forward for high-performance computing? Well, seems not to be the case, so I'm, I don't need to preach to the believers. Uh, um, just... Uh, have a look back in, in the 70s. Um, this is a picture of a portable uh, computer uh, from the 70s. It's uh, an IBM 5110. Um, it was, uh, well, probably you carried this with, with a back or something. I, I don't know. Um, but this is like, like history, and it was a 16-bit processor. And, and the question is, if software was written for this platform, it might be in Fortran, it might be in BASIC or whatever. Um, what are the chances that this software will be able to take advantage of modern uh, processors today, like um, multi, multi core Xeon uh, or, or many core Xeon Phi? Uh, I'm not sure what the chances are. I would say uh, probably, probably not, not that high. If we look at what's What's happening on the processor side, certainly on, on the Intel side, you see um, we are adding more cores. Um, we, we have two product lines, Intel Xeon, which is a multi-core architecture, and the Xeon 5 is a mini-core architecture. And we will continue to add a few more cores on the multi-core Xeon product line, um, but we are still trying to make a single thread, a single core as fast as possible. But we'll, we'll have some more cores. Uh, we also have with more cores, we have more threads coming. And uh, we'll also go to wider vector, which means wider SIMD. And it's for both product lines, for Xeon and for Xeon Phi. 
We have 512 bit SIMD today on Knight's Corner. Um, we go to AVX 512, which is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a new common instruction set between Xeon and Xeon Phi, and it will be implemented first in the next generation of Xeon Phi, a code name Knight's, Knight's, Knight's Landing, and it will also be implemented in future Xeon, Xeon processors. So you see that we are going parallel. Uh, with multi-core on the Xeon side and many-core on, on the Xeon Phi side. And if an application is and software is able to utilize all this functionality, it should be good. You should, should have a good potential for high performance. If not, um, you'll be leaving performance on the table. So to some extent, I think there is a gap. Um, there are certainly applications who can utilize it, but there are probably more applications who cannot utilize all the performance technologies which are today available. Uh, we, we have a gap. Uh, we have software on one hand, on the left hand, and there's all this parallelism and hardware on the, on, on the right hand, and the question is how do you get there without, without too much pain and in a, in a way which is sustainable. And I'll, I'll try to uh, show you how, how we think it, it, it can be done. And the next one. Um, this is a quote uh, from, uh, from a, um, an article appeared in, in Scientific Computing um, by Doug Black. And he basically talks about the urgency of code modernization. Um, yeah, that software should be parallelized, optimized, modernized. And it's basically the problem of outdated code, which is not able to, ut to utilize uh, all the, the modern technologies. And it's not only technical, it's also an economic uh, imperative, because if, if software is not taking advantage, companies who use this, this uh, software uh, will be lagging behind uh, in, in respect to what they can do, in respect to performance, um, faster time to market, better product, newer product, and so forth. So there is not only a technical need, uh, there is also a, a probably an even more economical need to modernize software. And the way is, how do you do it? Uh, there are different ways you can you can go. Um, we think there are kind of, if you look at it from a higher level, there are two two directions you can take. One is a is a, an open industry standard portable way uh, with reusable code. Uh, using industry standards like OpenMP um, 4.0 nowadays, uh, MPI and others. And there are some other ways which are a little bit more like kind of one way, um, one way di direction where you go uh, do some uh, tuning, optimization, modernization for more specific devices like um, like graphic cards, um, like FPGAs, or, or probably even ASICs. And sometimes it's probably a, a, a good way. Uh, it, it certainly depends uh, where you want to go, what you want to do, how much effort you want to put in, and how much you are able to, to leverage the work, the work you are doing. And uh, we think using open standards, uh, you, are, you are able to have a portable, scalable, and sustainable solution um, versus some others where you are, you are really kind of locked into, into certain things. In doing so, um, there is something called uh, Amdahl's Law, and I, I, I'm sure everybody, everybody knows Amdahl's Law. Um, um, I, the, I've read some, some articles recently on the web where, where people say, well, Amdahl's Law is not valid anymore. I'm, I'm not so convinced, um, uh, especially uh, driving on a car from A to B. I am always reminded about Amdahl's law. It doesn't matter how fast you go, it always takes the same time because of traffic jam and what, what, what have you. And it's, uh, it certainly is, uh, is still there. <laughs> There's this quote from an IBM folk saying, everyone knows Amdahl's law, but uh, quickly forgets about it uh, until, until it, it, it strikes back and, and hits you again. And um, this is where I'm trying to show you, because we have SIMD today in, in, in our processors, uh, and not only in ours, in, in all modern processors for performance, they use SIMD one type of shape and form. Um, we have multi-threading, um, and, and we have uh, messaging bit, bit between the nodes. And just if you look at SIMD and, and parallelism uh, within a processor, depending on how good you can use it, you can get uh, good performance. 
And this is an example for a, for a 61 core um, processor with, an, with 8 way SIMD per, per core. And you see, depending on the fraction of operations you can do in SIMD vector, uh, and depending on how much operations you can do in, in, in parallel through multi-threading, you can get certain certain performance level on this uh, on this curve. And you see, uh, if you have a high degree of parallelism and high degree of SIMD, um, this is where you really uh, you're really seeing the benefits. And it basically tells you that. Here, Amdahl's law strikes twice. It strikes you twice for, for using SIMD inside each core, and it strikes a second time uh, for parallelization, multi-threading across different cores. So you should try to actually utilize both as much as possible. And yeah, your mileage will vary depending on where you are with your application on this, on, on this, uh, on this curve. Um, this is just a, uh, an example to, to illustrate uh, what it looks like when you only when you're not using all the resources which are available. So if today on a on a on a on a multi or mini core processor, if you if you only use one core and no SIMD, you're actually using only very little piece, a fraction of the of, of the chip. Uh, and it kind of indicated in this uh, this highway. There's just there are lots of lanes, but only one car uh, go going. Um, if you use SIMD within a, within a single core, it's it's already better. You're using more, but you are still not 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 using a lot of of the of, of the chip, which and the functionality which is implemented. So you have kind of couple of, of uh, cars going uh, going behind each other. You can when you really start to using all the capabilities of, of modern processors, SIMD in the, inside the core and multi-threading across the cores, then you can really see when you, when you have this parallel vector execution where you can, uh, can get good performance, good throughput uh, using all the, the underlying technologies. And then in addition, you can basically add highways to each other and then you basically have, have like a cluster with multiple nodes, uh, each consisting of processors which have multiple cores which have SIMD in it. Um, this is an, is an interesting example, which shows you what what happens when you when you don't use parallel, parallelism. Um, it shows you performance for different type of execution uh, from a financial segment, a binomial oper uh, operations um, calculation, and it shows you a processor 2007, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, and the the, the blue line on the bottom. Um, it says uh, SS, which is a single, single threaded scalar. Um, the benefits you see over the last like seven years is well, is a, you see some benefit, but it's relatively small uh, because that's, that's the, the scalar performance per generation improves by something 15, maybe 20 percent, right? Well, we continue to do that if, if you just stay scalar and, and single, single threaded. The, the next one is the, the, the red line, which says um, vectorized and, and, and single thread. So it's a, it's a single core, but you use SIMD inside. And then you see, yeah, there, there are some improvements. And it comes uh, when, when we improve SIMD and hardware going from, um, <coughs> from SSE 128 bit to 256 bit with AVX and AVX2 um, with, uh, with FMA and, and, and potentially yeah, going to 512 bit in the future. You will see some increase, um, but it's also not like a, a, a big jump. Um, when you parallelize the gray line, you see you you, uh, you also you gain a little bit, but not 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 really so much. The real benefit comes with a yellow with a yellow line when you vectorize um, and and parallelize. So you simply and multi-threading uh, with with modern processors, then you see where both effects really multiply each other, and you really get uh, a, a good performance improvement. And this is where. Um, well, I think people should should try to be uh, with with their application. The good thing is that with the uh, with the Xeon Phi today, code name Knight's Corner, um, we already have a platform which which really shows you how good you can utilize with your application um, the technologies 
uh, SIMD vectorization and, and multi-threading. It has up to 61 cores, um, 244 threads. Um, it's 512-bit uh, wide SIMD. Um, so this platform actually really um, tells you quite nicely how good your application can 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 utilize uh, the the underlying technologies and. Um, you might be you might be afraid to try it because of the answer that your application is not really very well vectorized or parallelized uh, and be able to 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 extract the performance of, of the hardware which is available today. And I, I show you two two examples where where, where people went through the process uh, to to learn that. So here's an here's one example. Um, it's an application from a Max Planck Society in in, in Germany. Um, basically, so they they, they rent a code. Uh, it, it's a magnetohydrodynamic code on a on a Xeon uh, E5 processor. This is a Sandy Bridge architecture, uh, and you see the the the, the blue. The blue is the original code, um, lower is better. So on a CPU single socket, you yeah, you, you have a certain performance, and then you, you, you run your application on a um, on a Xeon Phi and um, and you see it actually runs slower. Um, so and why is that? Well, it's as you will see in the next example, uh, when you move from a three three gigahertz processor to a one gigahertz processor, uh, I, I would expect it to be slower. <laughs> there is no magic if you cannot really utilize uh, all the functionalities, right? Um, but then they basically looked at the code. Um, they they found that the they they. They didn't fully utilize the, the SIMD capabilities. So after then analyzing it, looking at the code, vectorizing the code, you see the red bar um, that uh, now um, it, it was already quite quite well threaded, but not really vectorized. But the red bar now shows you when you when you use SIMD hardware, uh, Xeon Phi actually runs runs uh, runs even faster um, than a, than a Xeon. It's like twice twice as much. What you would normally expect for uh, for optimized uh, for act optimized applications, and you also see that um, you, you also gain performance on the on the Xeon platform. So this is an example where using the Xeon Phi, um, the mic architecture, to really analyze the application and understand what's going on, and then do some further tuning to uh, to gain to gain more performance. Another example is from uh, Stanford University. Uh, they did some work together with Colfax. Um, a, a, um, a system integrator company. It's about a cosmology application uh, called the Heat Code, and um, uh, it, there's a is, is a nice paper describing the work they did. And so, what did they do? Well, they took their code, they run it on a Xeon, they run it on a Xeon Phi, uh, and uh, and observed that um, the performance on Xeon Phi was uh, was about one third of two Xeon uh, Xeon E5s. So why? Why is that? Well, because you move the code from a, a three gigahertz processor to a say <laughs> out of order to a, a one gigahertz in order pr uh, core, uh, and if you don't use more than one core and don't use SIMD, you you probably wouldn't wouldn't really expect it to run faster. Uh, it, it it normally runs slower. So and the reason was that the application had limited threading and no vectorization. And if you would stop here, you would say, yeah, okay, well, Xeon Phi is not, not good at all, uh, and, and, and just keep going. But that's, that's not really the, the real story. Once you look at the code and you, you vectorize and thread the code, um, you get a huge performance uh, improvement. And in this case, you see um, the, 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 the red, the, the blue bar. This is actually log scale there. Um, you see that uh, after optimization, um, your, your code now runs 620 times faster on Xeon Phi um, than, than, than before. And 125 times faster than 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 on, on two on two CPUs, and, and you could say, well, you could claim victory now and say, hey, yes, I got 600 times uh, more performance um, on on my application. Um, well, yeah, there's some minor details that you're comparing apples to oranges or bananas. Uh, it uh, so you don't don't really compare the right thing with each other. What you actually do is when you put the code back on Xeon. Uh, you also see that the code runs much faster on Xeon. 
<laughs> and, and then you basically see uh, some more realistic, uh, and you, you get that from just looking at the hardware specifications for optimized code, that a, 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 Xeon, a Xeon Phi is about twice as fast as two, as two Xeons, which is, which is not that bad. But you also see, once you optimize your code for a mini core architecture, uh, it, it runs uh, also very well on a, uh, on a multi-core architecture. Um, and then you can even uh, run, uh, run your application on, on more than one uh, Xeon file and more, uh, more Xeon CPUs, and you get even, e e even more performance. So the good thing um, after the learning here is that you can actually modernize your code. You can parallelize it in a portable way. Um, you, you maintain a single source code. Um, you can run it on different systems if there is a Xeon or a Xeon Phi or not, um, if there's a CPU or not. And, and that's the advantage versus some of the other options you might have if you, if you call, would code it to a, a GPU. It basically would just run on a GPU or not. And uh, you have to maintain different, different source codes that would probably not even run on, 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 on a platform where there is no GPU. Um, so there, there, there are different things you, you have to overcome. Um, so using a, a portable way, using industry standard um, programming models, um, you, you are able to, to really um, have an application which you can sustain. You do the optimization once, uh, you parallelize, you, you, you vectorize on a higher level, and basically let, let the software do the mapping to the under, uh, underlying hardware. So how, how do you do that? How can you do that? There are lots of different ways, and those are just some buzzwords uh, in, in respect to, uh, to parallel computing. Um, there are a couple of layers you, um, you, you, you can look at. Um, you can look at multi-threading, you can vectorization. Uh, we think OpenMP 4.0 is basically the industry standard. Um, you, but you could also use threading building blocks or Silk Plus. Um, you could also do hand threading with, with P-threads or, or Win32 threads or what have you. But that's probably a little bit more work. Um, for vectors, you can, use, um, you can use a compiler. You can use um, um, directives. You can use vector functions. You could use array notations. Uh, you, could, you could code intri intrinsics. Um, so those are all, all available things to do. Um, and then you would do potentially um, some, some blocking of your data to fit the memory in the cache hierarchy. Uh, and then in addition, you can even uh, um, optimize for, 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 for the data layout. Um, we think the way for multi-threading you, um, you should do it is through OpenMP 4.0. It's a, it's the latest standard, um, and there was a yeah there was a refinement uh, of the standard um, um, released uh, at uh, at supercomputing uh, last year in New Orleans in November. Um, OpenMP supports SMP multithreading. It, it now also supports SIMD vectorization as well as accelerator offloading. So that it, it can do everything other other APIs. Can, and environments can do, uh, in, but but even more. Uh, and this is just an example on how you could vectorize and parallelize a a, a, a simple loop. So you see the the, the kernel in, in, on on the bottom. It says a, there's you have two two loops, and uh, then you fill an array with with data from this function called Mendel. And uh, when you want when you want to parallelize here, well, you just put a pragma open MP uh, before the outer loop, um, and then you can you can vectorize the the inner loop with a pragma sim. And, and you, you do that, uh, you can even do that for a function uh, if you de declare this function as, 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 uh, as vectorizable. Uh, and that gives you a very portable, a very high performance way to, to implement those technologies in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a quite an, quite an, quite an easy way. Um, the latest software. From Intel, uh, our uh, Parallel Studio uh, Cluster and Professional Edition basically support all of those standards, OpenMP, MPI 3.0, OpenMP 4.0. We have full, full C++ 2011 support. Um, and um, yeah, depending on which version, if you if you if you get the cluster edition, it has everything in it for multi-threading on a vectorization on, on a node in a core, uh, and, and also Intel MPI library and the, the analyzer for for MPI. Um, 
that's basically the full package uh, to help you um, get that done. Um, you already heard about that uh, from, from the speaker from iCheck uh, uh, today. Um, we are also engaging uh, with the community to, to help people understand what software modernization is and actually do it. Um, we are in, in, uh, engaging with institutions and customers around the world uh, and it, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, growing, it's a growing, growing list of, um, uh, of institutions uh, really working, working in this area, helping the industry to move forward uh, with software modernization. Uh, we also now have what's called the Intel Xeon Phi Coprocessor Application and Solutions Catalog, which is on the web, and you see the, the, the URL above there. This is where you can, can, can look at applications uh, which are, so to speak, modernized uh, and being able to utilize um, new modern um, parallel, parallel tech technologies specifically uh, on the Xeon Phi side. Um, there are also some, some other readings. Um, there's a, a, a nice book from James Reinders and Jim Jeffers, the two Intel guys, uh, on, uh, on mini-core programming with, with, with lots of, of, of hands-on examples how to, how to do things. Um, and and ah, wrong button. Uh, and there's, there's also a nice book which is also available as, as an e-book uh, from some of my, my colleagues on optimizing high-performance computing applications using the in Intel cluster tools, uh, addressing the, the different aspects, um, MPI, multi-threading, microarchitecture, um, microarchitecture did, um, design uh, uh, optimization. Um, so that's, uh, if you're interested, uh, that's uh, quite... Quite a nice book. And with that, we are right on time for coffee. Thank you very much.